Greetings. Mount Pleasant, how are you? Well, some of you may not even know who Mount Pleasant is. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church is in Shreveport, Louisiana, 6540 Lyon Avenue, and I am the pastor of Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant and also my media audience, I want you to know I love you and I miss you. I miss you because most of you know we are not gathering together like we typically do in the traditional church house because our world and our nation is in a crisis so that we are worshiping from home. We're having church in our house rather than us going to the church house. But I'm so glad to be with you again. I want you to know that this is a time span that we're not together like we used to, but we will get a chance to get back together. And when we get back together, we will be better than we were at first. I want to read the scripture and then I want to offer up some prayer. And then I want to tell you my message for today. Today is now April the 2nd of 2020. Here's the scripture from 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1. If you don't have your Bible, grab your Bible because we're going to go through some scriptures and I'm going to give you this message. In 1 Timothy 2 and 1, it says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Bow your head with me and let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together by media Father, we thank you that your spirit is here to lead and guide us into all truth. We pray, God, for wisdom and for knowledge and understanding from your word so that we can make right decisions and give you the glory. We also pray for our leaders across this land, wherever we are. Father, we pray for our nation and for our world. And our desire is that your will would be done in our lives, that we would be victorious in any situation that we're facing and most of all, God, we want to know you more and we want to have a deeper relationship with you. You get the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to say it again that because of the coronavirus, this is a season that we're going through. And it's a time of crisis for a lot of families across the world, not just in our region, but across the world. But I want to remind everybody that this is only a season. No church service in the traditional form. That's why we take on this other form. So this evening, we're actually going to have church and worship and get some word and honor God as if we were actually in the church house. Remember, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Those of us that are saved, that have asked Jesus in our heart as Savior, we understand that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose on the third day, he's alive, and he has all power in his hands. And if we invite Jesus, if we call on him, Jesus into our heart, you're saved forever, and he is now your savior, and we allow him to be Lord as we obey him going through this life. I want to also remind everybody that in this particular season, a lot of us are wearing masks. We wear masks for several reasons. One, to protect ourselves from others and germs and bacteria, virus and fungi. But we also wear masks to protect other people. So remember that this is a season that we're wearing masks. Sometimes they are uncomfortable. Sometimes they do get a little hot. But there's a reason that we do it because we want to use wisdom to protect ourselves. I was telling one of my uh, patients the other day that in the winter time, the winter season, many of us wear a coat and we don't complain about it. We don't get mad about wearing a coat because we know that there is a reason that we're wearing a coat because that is the season that we're in. Well, in this season where the coronavirus seems to want to run rampant, remember that we have to do the things that's necessary 
and wearing a mask is part of it. So that's why I have this mask on. I wanted to remind everybody that you must use wisdom to keep yourself safe. The message for today is God is on my side. And I want you to say that back to me. I mean, say it to me and say it out loud. So if I were in front of you, you would convince me that God is really on your side. So you're going to say, God is on my side. God is on my side, but I want you to know that how God works is many times different than what we would plan. I want to tell you about this story in 2 Kings, and so if you will, grab your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Kings. This book of 2 Kings chapter 5 starts off with a, a, a very powerful story, and we get introduced to a man named Naaman in verse number 1 of chapter 5. In verse number one, we learn that Naaman was a captain. He was a ruler. And this man, Naaman, was considered a great man and honorable because what happens is the Bible describes that the Lord allowed him to take over part of an Israel nation because they were disobedient. He was powerful and he was a ruler and the Lord allowed him to succeed because there was a discipline going forward for the Israel nation because they had served the idol gods. And verse number one describes that the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. And the Bible describes that Naaman was mighty in battle, that he was a man of valor. And then the very last part of it says, but he was a leper. He was a ruler and he was a mighty man and he had a lot of things going but there is this but, but he was a leper. Well, I want to tell you that it's amazing how God can use people with all kinds of issues. But in this particular story, Naaman was being used to bring some judgment or some discipline to the children of Israel because of their disobedience. And not that God is mad at us because God is not mad at us. God is on our side but like any other loving father, there are times when we need discipline. It's important that we learn to obey the Lord because even in this new generation that we're in now, we're not fighting wars like we used to. As a matter of fact, this coronavirus is a virus we cannot even see with our, with our natural eyes. But it's still important for us to obey God. Disobeying God still allows for the enemy to get a foothold the enemy to get an opportunity, the enemy to get a place in your life because of disobedience. That's how this man, Naaman, ended up showing up in this story was because the children of Israel had done wrong and they were being disciplined. But even in that, I want to show you how God still wants to show himself mighty in all aspects of everybody's life. The Bible says that this man was mighty, but he had a problem just like every one of us. You may be great in a lot of areas, but you're not perfect. Every one of us has some kind of an issue. This man had an issue, and he was a leper, which was a very deadly disease back in that, in that time. The good thing about it, though, is that when Naaman captured this Israel nation, he also captured a young maiden who was not ashamed to speak up at the appointed time. And a lot of times we think that God is going to use only the great and mighty people that we know. But God is so awesome in how he works out things for our good. The Bible says in verse number two that Naaman brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. Now think about it. This young girl, I only have one daughter. Her name is Hope. I can only imagine if she were taken away from her family. Would she still hold on to her faith? Would she still talk up God or would she get bitter and angry at the situations in life? But this one girl, little maiden, Bible never even gives her a name. She was a servant to Naaman's wife. And one day when she heard the situation going on with her master, Naaman, she made this statement. I would to God that my master were with the prophet in the land of Israel. In Samaria, he would recover him of his leprosy. 
And what happened is somebody heard her, and I love verse number four because in verse number four, when somebody heard what she said, they repeated what she said, and the Bible says that thus and thus said the maid. Thus and thus said the maid. You know, a lot of times when we get, I want to say in trouble or we get into crisis, we shut down and we won't open our mouth. We won't talk faith. We won't give God the glory. We won't point people to Christ. But this girl was not afraid to speak up. She was not ashamed of the God that she served. She was expecting God to do something good. So today I'm asking you, are you expecting God to do something good? you got to know that God is on your side. You think about it. God, even though God was using uh, uh, Naaman to bring some discipline to the children of, of Israel, God was still on his side because God is going to use this situation to bring his healing. And then you look at this little girl. Even though she was captured from where she called home, now she ended up in this place where she could be a mouthpiece for God. She had the faith, and she opened her mouth. What happened, though, is that when she opened her mouth and told the word about the prophet that could bring healing, we all know that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But faith is not real faith until it's active, until you do something about it. And before long, Naaman was on his way to meet this man of God, the prophet, who would bring the healing. Naaman had in his mind a certain way that he felt like God was going to move. But what happened is the prophet obeyed the Lord as well. And when the prophet obeyed the Lord, Naaman felt disrespected. Naaman showed up in verse number nine with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the house of Elisha, the prophet. So when he showed up, he showed up with this entourage that looked like he was the man. But what happened is there was so much pride involved that even God had to show him who was really in charge. God had to bring him to a point where he could humble himself to receive. And in verse number 10, Elisha didn't even meet him at the door. Elisha sent a messenger to give him the word of God. The word of God was go and wash in the Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. A word of God, but it didn't come from the way you thought it was going to happen. A lot of times God doesn't do things the way we think because God is on our side. He knows us inside and out. And what he wants to do is mold and shape us into who we need to be rather than what we think we ought to be. Verse number 11 is crucial to me. And be sure and look at it. In the King James it says, But Naaman was wroth and went away. And I want to say he was angry and went away just like he came. He came a leper, he got angry, and he went away a leper. Same things, same results. No change and no results. It says, he says in verse number 11, Naaman says, Behold, I thought. Behold, I thought. How many times do we think that things ought to go a certain way? Well, I never would have thought that God would allow us to not be able to have church service in the church house. But we are having service. It's just the church in your house instead of the church house. Naaman said, I thought he would surely come out to me. And stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. Strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. I surely thought God would have done it this way. Or God would have done it that way. He even put his reasoning in verse number 12. He said, and then why should I have to dip in the Jordan? Why do I have to dip in the place where you said go? There are other rivers that are just as good. How many times is it easy for us to lean to our own understanding instead of, instead of just Simply trusting God and looking for the results. Verse number 12, said it again. So he turned and went away in a rage. In a rage. Right now, somebody listen to me, and you are in a rage right now. You're angry because something didn't happen the way you thought it ought to go. And rather than you adjusting your attitude, adjusting your mind, calming yourself down, humbling yourself, you get in a rage. 
and you get the same results that you already had. You don't get the victory. You don't get the healing. You get the same results because you leave empty, not willing to change and let God get the glory. Well, all he had to do was obey. And what happened is that I want to tell you, God was on Naaman's side because also in the midst of all of the horses and the chariot, there were some servants that just simply gave him instructions. Naaman, if the prophet would have told you to do something big and mighty, would not you have done it? How simple is it for you to just obey what he told you to do? Just do what he told you to do. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. To humble yourself, give up what you thought, and go ahead and do what God thought. Verse number 14 says, he went down, he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. He did what he was supposed to do, and he came up again clean. Verse number 15 is also crucial because when Naaman was healed, he came to know God in a very real way. And when you know God for yourself, your mind changes, your actions change, your whole nature changes. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You want to do things differently, and you want to honor God. So in verse number 15, he says, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. He got changed. He got healed. He got delivered. God is on your side. You can be changed, you can be healed, and you can be delivered because God is on your side. Say it with me one last time. God is on, make it personal, say my side, my side. Come on, give God some praise and have a good evening.